Good evening. It's Tuesday evening. It is the 12th of January, and I was trying to think if today was a special day in some way, and so I asked Carrie, and Carrie's response was, it's Tuesday and we're alive, and that's great, and I agree totally with that. So we're glad that you're here with us tonight, and we are ever grateful to hear a word from God. We've been talking about the fruits of the Spirit, and tonight our word together, our fruit together, is kindness. So I want to share with you once again, see how far you can go with me, the, the, uh, the scripture passage where the fruits are listed. And remember, if you will, that this is in, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, for the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, 22. That's going to be in our brain for the first learning of the new year. But these are the words from that passage. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So tonight we have looked at love and we've looked at joy and we've looked at peace and we looked yesterday at patience or as some people say uh, long-suffering or forbearance. And so today is a word that we could all agree on and that word is kindness. That's a fruit of the Spirit. And we know that as a fruit of the Spirit, we don't go by the fruit, kindness. It's, you know, something like a grape or an apple or whatever. That that has to be given to us and worked with the Holy Spirit. And then as it comes out, we see it in witness as kindness toward other people, kindness toward animals, kindness toward other countries. Just kindness in general comes out of us for a witness to Christ uh, to other people. And so I have two passages that I want you to hear tonight that I think will help us to understand this, especially in the time in which we live. There are a lot of people who are very afraid, and we talked about that all last year, except now we have added fear to that besides the COVID, which seems to be coming at us faster and faster in this area. Uh, So now many of us have many friends with COVID. uh, But instead of just COVID, we have the fear that something is actually going to happen to us physically or by other people or what could happen. So that fear is very high and very relevant to a lot of folks. Plus, they have the fear of COVID. Now is a time for those of us who are called as Christians, as followers of Christ, to step in and to know that we are fully equipped with the fruits of Christ and for us uh, to be able to share these fruits with other people. We can be those who help other people to stay and have joy, to be patient, to learn patience, to have that gift given to them. All the things that we need right now to be strong and to help others be strong, we can be given this day. It's not like God's going to put us off forever, but God will be willing and is very much able to bless us with the fruits so that we might be a blessing to others, especially in our times of need. And this most sincerely is a time of need if there ever has been one in this world. So I want to share this passage, and if you write little notes or anything, uh, the first one is from Colossians. And it's from the third chapter of Colossians, and I'm going to begin up in the sixth verse of the second chapter, and I'm going to work then down into, that's not right, I'm going to start with the sixth verse of of the third chapter, I'm going to work down a little bit, okay? So I know what that means, if you'll just listen to me, please. But now set aside these things, such as anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene language. Don't lie to each other. Take off the old human nature with its practices and put on the new nature, which is renewed in knowledge by conforming to the image of the, of the one who created it. In this image, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all things and in all people. Isn't that good news? Therefore, as God's choice, holy and loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. But tolerant with each other, and if someone has a complaint against anyone, forgive each other. 
As the Lord forgave you, so also you must forgive each other. And over all these things put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. The peace of Christ must control your hearts, a peace into which you were called, and you were called into one body. And be thankful for people. The word of Christ must live in you richly. Teach and give each other all of this wisdom by singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts, and whatever you do, whether in speech or in action, do it with the name of of the love of Jesus, and give thanks to God the Father through all of this. This is a good word for us. It's a good word for us tonight. Because it talks to us about exactly what it is that we are to give up. And what I hear in this passage from Paul's writing to the church at, at, to the Colossian church, is that I hear that they've fallen into a situation very much described in the world in which we live today, where people hate people. Actually, the scripture uses that, that part, uh, where people hate people and they are disgusted with one another and they are living in fear and they are living in anger. And One of the things that, as Paul writes to them, he addresses that completely. He doesn't walk away from it. He doesn't act like it isn't happening, but he acknowledges that, in fact, it is happening. These kinds of things are happening around us. It's not like we can say they're not happening when they are. And Paul calls it out also. And then he says, remember, you're doing this. You're acting a different way. You've turned around now because of God's love and kindness toward you. When we talk about kindness, the important thing is we always remember, well, now, what is that? We always think. Now, what is that? What is kindness? Uh, What do I think is kindness? What kind of kind acts should I do? But here's what I want us to be remember and to be mindful of today, and that is we don't really have to ask that question. God gives us what we need. And we act out of what God gives us. It sort of is, you know, if, if you have been given love and you feel, you feel full of love, then you are going to love other people. It's inevitable. You can't really keep it down. It's sort of like maybe when you were falling in love with your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, or the birth of a child. And I can still remember when they handed me both Robert and Mark, but I remember it happening. It was in two different ways, but I remember both how this happened and how I felt. And I can remember when they brought Robert into me and I had had a really bad struggle. I'd had a C-section and they didn't think that Robert was going to live and it was just a very scary period of time. But what immediately came out of me, even though I had been very fearful, what immediately came out of me was this overwhelming love and this need to take care of this child, to make sure that everyone was kind to him, to make sure that he was safe. And of course, I felt like I was the only one who could do that. <laughs> That's kind of the way mothers get to be sometimes, but it's, it's essential. It's who we are as we've been gifted that through Christ. That's who we become. I couldn't hold my love in for Robert any more than I could hold my love in for any of you. And I certainly couldn't hold that kindness in. I wanted to take him immediately, immediately into my arms and to love him and protect him. That's what God does and gives to us. These are gifts, and these gifts are truly, when they are given, when, they, when we accept them as they have been given to us by God, they are completely overwhelming. You can't act. You just, you can't. You can't act against what God has given you and God has declared to be your gift. Uh, Whatever you have been given, that's the way. If it's truly from God and you know you've been given it, you may want to be mad at somebody. And yet you love God so much and you've trained your heart to follow God and you believe in God so much that even if you want to be mad at somebody... God's not going to let you through that Holy Spirit that tells you kindness is important. Don't be mean. As the Colossians passage says, be forgiving of one another. Go as far as you can with everyone 
forgiving. Go as far as you can, as we talked about yesterday, with patience, with joy. Go as far as you can, which is pretty far when you think about the gifts of God and how generous God is. Our God is a generous God, and our God is a compassionate and kind God. And when we see all of the ways that God could be unkind, all of the power that God has over the universe, that God is still on the throne, and yet God chooses to give us Jesus Christ to save all of us, instead of using his power, his mighty deeds, for something that would be against us, something that would hurt us. God would never hurt us, and we have to remember that. When something is hurting us or something is is evil, it's not from God. God doesn't do that. God isn't like testing us to see how, how things are and how far we can go. God is with us. God wills good for us. If you ever think, is this something that happened and it's terrible and God willed this? God didn't will that. You can always know know through the life and death of Jesus, you can always know that God wills good and that God wills the best for you that's possible. And that's why his kindness in Jesus Christ comes through so clearly. And it is kindness, even though it's hard to see that way sometimes because because crucifixion is such an ugly, horrible act that the Romans have chosen to use to crucify people. And yet Jesus did that willingly because out of his, as the scripture says, out of his compassion and his kindness, he was willing to do this for us. That is the ultimate in kindness. I couldn't begin to touch that even think of a way to be that kind, that I would give up everything and be, be hurt, be, um, die in the process of it for people that I don't even know right now. But Jesus could, and Jesus did, and that's who Jesus is. So if you ever have a question about that and about tonight's word of kindness, I want you to think about that. That same person who died on the cross for us in the form of Jesus also fills us with kindness, also gives us a chance to help other people become more kind and less angry because we too want to walk in that kindness. We too want to be an example of Christ. We too want to follow him. And so tonight for all of us, I ask ask Jesus that he would fill us all up with kindness to overflowing, so that the only thing that can come out of us toward other people and living with ourselves also is kindness. That's our word today, because that's our fruit of the Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.